No matter who you are or where you live, if your passion is hunting, then make your dreams come true. Join us on a great safari and adventure as we traverse five continents in search of world's finest hunting trophies. Join the best professional hunters in the world in search for the best trophy animals. You will experience unforgettable hunting adventures and international cultures that few people on earth get to know. Share the thrill of the ultimate challenge to promote the sustained use of world's greatest renewable resources, wildlife conservation, and fair chase hunting. Feel the excitement, share the passion, join the experience of the ultimate adventure that this world has to offer. Let Safari Season take you there. In this episode of Safari Season, our honorable guest is the most famous bow hunter and host of the show Ultimate Shot, Archie Nesbitt. In order to join our good friend Archie Nesbitt to take part with him in hunting moose and elk. I carry it with me because it breaks the silhouette. And uh, we still haven't had a bull elk see it, but I'm, we're gonna we stick it out to see it so it protrudes from the cover, and uh, hopefully a bull will come and check it out, and we can check him out. That was quite strange. We found a perfectly shaped rocky ball on the green grass. How did it come to be here? Was it a meteorite? Yes, it was quite strange, but we didn't research it for long because the elk herds were already on the move. We had found the fresh game pathway, which the elks used not too long ago. We were about to try stalking them near their watering place. If they come down on that elk trail, it's 25 yards. <laughs> so that'll be really close. Cool. And we've got a couple of Alubinox. I got uh, my Trophy Ridge seven pin sight, and I got a light on it. So even in really uh, dusky conditions, uh, we should be able to get a shot. Hopefully the camera picks it up, but uh, some of the nights they've been here before the sun's down, usually they come the last half hour. And uh, it was cool today, all day, like it was, fall day and then all of a sudden the sun broke through the clouds and it's been perfectly blue sky since about two o'clock so it's really heated up and uh, it's warm so they'll be sitting up there on that hill in the sun and uh, we've seen them swimming and lying in the pond so uh, and that's the last couple of days so uh, hopefully they come for a swim and hopefully there's a big bull and hopefully he stands broadside, and hopefully we, we pull the ultimate shot. <laughs> the last preparation took place, and the ambush place was almost perfectly masked.
The first test was passed. It is well known that ducks and geese are the most cautious among the wildlife when it comes to their choice of habitat. Since our presence remained unnoticed by them, we had provided a good cover-up amidst the bushes. Maybe we needed a last scratch to make our cover-up perfect. In less than half an hour, the animals arrive for their afternoon bath. A female and a youth are the first to appear. A flock of geese was disappointed to see the deer have already conquered the lake. These timid birds do not like sharing the basins in which they land with other terrestrial inhabitants. In addition to hearing the love calling of a young elk from the hill above us, a coyote approaches the place for watering. Obviously, the place is quite popular amongst the wildlife. If a large male appears, everything would be perfect. While we are waiting for the appearance of a trophy elk, we witness the free game of the young deer. Obviously, the one-year-old animal enjoys a lot the opportunity to roll in the mud without being bothered by the adult elks. The noises made by the youth makes the coyote trying to hunt nearby scornful. Half an hour later, the coyote scorn is rewarded with an exotic performance. The grouses play their representative dance at the lakeshore in order to impress their females, but their only fan is the coyote stalking nearby. Meanwhile, a young yet very promising male approaches the lake. Vlado gets the unique chance of taking several incredible photos of the beautiful animal. The magnificence and beauty of the view are worth the share with the thousands of hunters that read his articles in the hunting magazines around the world. The coyote waits for the beginning of the grouse's performance to attack. Meanwhile, an opponent of the bathing elk appears, not only for the lake, but for the females nearby.
The male is fast to solidify its advantage while its competition is far away. The battle is inevitable and the two opponents retreat from the lake to find a suitable terrain for their clash. They are not more than 30 meters from us, behind the willows. Soon, the winner will show up along the pathway and our time will come. We're sneaking along the edge of the thick shrubs to see the battling animals. The winner would have the right to take the harem of young females near the lake. The herd is calmly waiting for the winner. We are also looking forward for the one to show up. Both elks are of similar trophy quality. Nevertheless, we are soon to find out that our plan has failed. Because of some reason, the elks leave the lake region and head towards the large herd that moves away from us to the north. We stand a great chance of a new group of elks appearing at sunset. Additionally, the coyotes slowly but steadily approach the lake. Archie could have the chance of helping the elks get rid of the predator. A young animal runs along the slope near the lake. The coyotes notice it and start calling for support. And the youth gets confused with fear and does not follow its herd, so it is doomed. As night sets, the coyotes' coordinated attacks would make the victim weak and it would fall to the predator's paws. Archie's shot hit the coyote. The other coyotes didn't even realize that their chain is broken and the youth stands the chance of getting out of the predator's ambush. the prairies. Yeah, we're heading out into the uh, prairies of western Canada. Uh, we're going to see a lot of grain fields, a lot of native grass. Hopefully we see a few antelope uh, just out on that native grass. We're expecting to see mule deer and uh, some parts where we're hunting out here, where we're hunting geese, we might even see moose. Moose have come back. There's now a draw for them. It takes about 12 years to get a tag, but this is mainly uh, goose country and uh, some ducks, typically greenheads, mallards, but get uh, get pintails. So uh, we're going in a mixed bag hunt. Pan Alberta, goose capital of Alberta. We are here for the third subsequent time with the specialists famous for their mobile shelters made of real branches. Unlike the company renowned for its name Realtree, these guys really use real trees and branches for shelter. Their success in hunting the feathered ones in the Hannah Fields turned them into living legends. Every owner of freshly mowed and sown fields wanted from our legends to strengthen their mobile shelters onto their lands. Oh, well, we didn't you bring one? Yeah. I brought one head. I brought oh, the head here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we just stand out there with a the head. Yeah. Fair enough. You want to do everything right by you, so you better, uh, you can just tell us what. Because I don't want you, your wife to be unhappy at us. If you don't My get, if you don't get your geese home. No 
matter how hard and time-consuming the whole preparation looks like, it is the best you can do to remain unnoticed in the middle of a vast bare field in Hanna. The shelter made of fresh birch twigs is so good that sometimes it can even attract the attention of the bison herds passing nearby. Nevertheless, they're not the best neighbors if you want to make a big Canadian goose land close to you. Everything that seems too nice is bad. A too freshly looking shelter. Too strong winds and storms. Everything that in principle is perfect in moderate quantities is a problem if it is more. Oh shit. I'd love to hunt in that wind, but... Were there Poor. geese in Kellicott yesterday? Did which? Were there geese over there yesterday? Uh, I never oh. got there to look the day before. They've been there for two or three weeks. Okay. Where's my track? The day starts with a strong and very cold wind. Everyone knows that this is the perfect weather in which flocks fly at low height and could be hunted literally from all sides. Not supposed to be high, said they'd be low. I think we gotta go that way. The wind is that from here, they're gonna drift. Despite the perfect conditions, the birds were not flying over in big flocks. Probably the weather was too bad and the ducks and geese were hiding in the lakes and puddles. It was worth checking this out. Archie was famous for his precision, and with three shots, all three birds were about to get in the hunter's bag. Just that the last bird didn't agree with that wish of ours. Did you find it? No. <laughs> On the map, I think it's perfect. Fence right there, we could ride in. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. That's quite a waste of that dam, much. Well, you drive carefully. I'll get a dam in three quarters of an hour. Good. What are you guys doing in the wild? We're going to go look for a deer. deer. Let's go look for deer. You're looking for deer now? Yeah. Nevertheless, the deer were also stressed out by the strong winds and we didn't stand a chance of approaching it at a distance convenient for shooting. Additionally, the wind made the ducks look for shelter and Archie knew of several of their favorite places. Again, three shots and three birds in the bag. In order to put them in the bag, first we had to get them out of the water. It would have been nice to have a dog, 
yet we were going hunting deer. Yet, if there are no deer, ducks are enough to patch our hunting pride. From my side. Really? From my side on the top. <laughs> My first goose. <laughs> Good. It was nice. Yeah. Another one. <laughs> Hunting is like fishing. Sometimes you're lucky, but in most cases you just show old pictures and remember the good moments. 